basically yet, so it hasn't started. Okay. I think the reason I knew that this was a an idiom is because a lot of like podcasts will have the cold open, which is just an out of context snippet of conversation from this part of the recording. Um, but it's mm-hmm. it's so good though because like I would do that if I if I had the patience and the editing ability. Because, oh sure. Because people are just saying it's just better. This part of the conversation just feels more organic and natural. Mm-hmm. And like it's hard to get that, uh, it turns out. Yeah. Hello everyone. I'm Cody Rue. This is the Church of Logic. And I'm here with two great people, Chris Martins and Rob Simmons. Am I pronouncing your names right? Absolutely. Yep. Great. And uh, I met them at CMU. They're experts in uh, what we're going to talk about today, which is linear logic and adjacent subjects. I guess we'll find out. So, what what's linear logic? So yeah, we like, you know, it's easy to start with where we already are because we have the logic that we're used to, and I'm assuming in this crowd, like an intuitionist or a, a intuitionistic or a constructive logic, is not a completely unfamiliar idea. So there's this idea that that logic, proofs in logic, do things that if I have, you know, a proof that A implies B, I can take an A and get a B, and mm-hmm. um, you know, and this is. Uh, and truth works like this. If I have the premise of a proof, I can get the conclusions, and then I can get it again, right? I don't get to use Riemann's, uh, you know, if, if I have a proof of Riemann's hypothesis, I don't get to use that one time. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you used it up. <laughs> I used it up, right? right. I mean, that, we were saving that. I do kind of want that metafiction, but that's not the case. And, uh, and so... Uh, we sometimes describe linear logic as a logic of resources. It's a logic where we actually have to think about having, using, and then no longer having a thing. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, yeah, non sequitur, but there is a, a SMBC joke, right? Between SMBC and XKC, you <laughs> all the jokes ever about all science fields. And yeah, the premise of the joke is every time you use, like, you know, the central limit theorem or something it gets it gets used up a, a little, little bit, bit yeah <laughs> and so and so now they're rationing out the mathematics and you're you're not allowed to like you know run a machine model mm-hmm. or so okay so linear logic is, is a logic, logic where that's where kind of get, real well that's kind of true things get yeah. used up yeah all right so what you know why why would one want to do this right yeah, um, I, you know, so so this is a useful concept that comes up in a bunch of computing applications. I mean, we joke about like mathematical theorems being finite, but when you're running something on a real machine, sometimes it is actually useful to think about the resources that you're consuming, or you know, the the programs that you're writing is consuming resources and wanting to represent that, whether that's like a finite store of memory that you have, or uh, you know, the amount of power you're you're consuming, or something like that. Um, or even just something more abstract, uh, describing how, like, the state of the underlying machine that you're using is changing as you're as you're running computations. Uh, so is there, great, yeah. great, great, great. So okay, so what? How how does one describe linear logic? Basically, I, I think I have an idea about this, and you know, I've talked about the sequence calculus a little bit before. But, but how, like, what, what does this look like concretely, like the rules? How do we write it down? Yeah. So yeah. there are a couple of, of examples that people tend to use for starting off with linear logic. There's the idea of, um, and a lot of them are somehow financial in major, nature, because like, you know, if I have a theorem, I get to use the theorem as many times as I want. If I have a dollar, I don't get to use the dollar yeah, as many yeah. times as I want. Um, there's a menu uh, metaphor that people use, but there's also. Do you want to introduce the vending machine? Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of a fan of this uh, this vending machine analogy, and mostly this is like you know linear logic, like uh, many you know ways of presenting constructive logics can kind of be described in terms of what connectives it has and how you you know present rule like pairs of rules more or less for those connectives, um, either like introducing and eliminating. Uh, proofs of those connectives, 
uh, if you're in a natural deduction setting or since Cody's talked about sequence calculus, um, you know, having left and right rules. But right. yeah, basically ways that you define a connective are about like talking about how you construct something that lives in that connective and talking about how you can use a proof of uh, something that lives yeah. in that connective. So like uh, in ordinary logic, we have implication, which is the thing that Rob brought up earlier about having like a function that takes an A and then gives you a B. Um, we also have a kind of implication in linear logic, uh, usually written like a sideways lollipop and pronounced lolly. Uh, <laughs> so a lolly B is a connective that would take an A as input and then give you a B, but you no longer have the A. Uh, so it's like consumes the resource. And there are other connectives in linear logic that one can describe in terms of this like vending machine metaphor potentially to okay. uh, get into um, what they are. Maybe I should have planned this better, but let, let's, okay, let's drill down a little bit. So, so in sequent calculus, right, how, how does, Okay, in natural deduction, I, I know how A implies B, right? If, if you in context gamma, you can deduce A implies B, and you can also deduce A, then in the same context gamma, you can deduce B. Mm -hmm. and, and, okay, so in linear logic, what has to change here? Can you do a natural deduction style linear logic? Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. So what you have to do is represent, yeah, so if you're writing down the context explicitly, then you have, a, you have one context, uh, maybe call it, uh, gamma that uh, proves A, and then you have another context, delta, that under delta and a proof of, no, sorry, I'm doing the sequence calculus version. Uh, under, if, if delta proves A lolly B, uh, then you can combine delta and gamma to get B. Right, right. So in some sense, let's see. So I, so I always get confused, right? You can, you can read things bottom up, where you sort of say, if I want to prove B using the implication, I have to divide my resources and see which ones I get to spend on proving A implies B and which ones I get to spend on proving A. On top down, you can say, hey, you know, using $10, I managed to prove A implies B and using, you know, 20 zloty, I managed to prove, you know, <laughs> A. And now I can combine them in a big pool. I know that if I combine all that money, I'll be able to prove B. And I think it's actually useful here to, to, to instantiate A and B, right? If I have, what is a vending machine? A vending machine is a machine, is a, a thing that turns a dollar into a Diet Coke. So with some resources, that's yeah. your first gamma. I don't think we can get sued by the Coca-Cola company. <laughs> you you no. make, you go from, I'm not gonna disparage Diet Coke. You, yeah. you, you have some resources to make a machine that goes from a dollar Dollar lolly diet coke. Yeah. Um, and then you have some other resources you used to obtain your dollar. Um, but once you have those resources to obtain the dollar, whether that's your labor or yeah. a cake you baked, you don't have those anymore. You have the dollar now. Mm -hmm. And you don't have Very the raw materials you used to make. <laughs> it's kind of you're going to end up with some capitalism. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now, okay. The weird thing about this this way of presenting the metaphor is if this is your picture, you've got, when you get the Diet Coke, you have now destroyed both your dollar and the vending machine. Right. So yeah, the vending machine. The is. vending machine is, is, this is a single right. use vending machine yeah, that's that cute. you've now, you've now like, you know, constructed. And so this brings up another connective of linear logic that's kind of the escape hack back, hatch back into the logic that we're used to. Yeah, can we pick a word, by the way? Can we either say structural or persistent for the logic that isn't linear? Just oh, let's so we do can persistent. Stick... Okay. I hate structural. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, so, so right, this, what Rob's bringing up is that it's it really the reason you usually want to introduce linear logic is in combination with other logics, and usually in combination with, uh, with a persistent logic that works the way you ordinarily expect logic to work. So normal logic. Yeah. <laughs> normal logic. Normal I chose logic. this third word. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with, yeah. In, it, we're as long as we're not using normal to refer to like normal yeah, yeah. forms or something, it's fine. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I do, okay, in fairness, I do sometimes get mildly annoyed that people call, you know, logic the excluded middle classical logic, mm. as if that's sort of the natural state of the world. Mm -hmm. But 
A, I've kind of gotten over this. And B, whatever. Like, if people talk about logic, right, and, and you just look at populations of people, uh, maybe that's a bad way to think about it. But yeah, just okay. think of it as so, technical terms. Yeah. So, um, persistent slash ordinary everyday logic uh, is the logic where things don't get consumed, and you're interested in seeing how that works kind of in more detail, mm -hmm. and you can zoom into this using linear logic, Yep. Plus, this thing you're about to explain, I feel. Yeah, the connective, which is an exclamation point, and we call bang. Um, and so, if you're actually, you know, a vending machine is not actually an unlimited resource. Like, a vending machine is not a truth in, in, yeah, you know, yeah. in logic. But when we're trying to think about how a vending machine works, it's useful to think about it as bang, unlimited use, parentheses, dollar, lolly, diet coke. So you get not just, so the bang around uh, entire lolly, ar around a dollar, lolly, diet coke means I can use this as many times as I want to. I see, I see, I see. Uh -huh. And so that doesn't mean that you get as many diet cokes as you want to. No. But it does mean that the machine is still around. Yes. It, it means you have a reusable machine from dollars to diet cokes yeah if you can get bang dollar then you're then, then you're golden then yeah, you've yeah, yeah. come up with an infinite <laughs> money glitch yeah. but uh but having a a uh you know having bang flower having infinite flower is different than saying that you have bang uh flower lolly cake right like yeah. if, if i you know that it's yeah okay yes that that would be nice as well. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot more with Rob and Chris to be continued in our next episode.